Okay, so we've got this image here, which we want to turn into a wedding invite, or we want to use it for a mock-up for some kind of invitation or anything else that will go on a piece of paper this sort of size or shape. And the first thing I want to do actually is just add a little bit more interest outside of the page itself. So I've got the magic replace tool selected and I've already got a prompt typed in, which is small succulent plant because I want another small potted plant um, around up here just so that that other one doesn't look quite as lonely. So I'm just doing a rough shape, making sure that I've given it plenty of room to hopefully generate a shadow as well. And I'm just going to click replace and see what it happens, see what it does now i know if you're on the free version of photopea then you will have to watch a couple of adverts quick adverts they're not very intrusive in order for it to process um so okay that plant looks great the shadow is not going in the right direction but i i like how the image is kind of integrated so i'm going to just ignore that little faux pas for now we can always go back and adjust that later so that's just added a bit more visual interest now let's get down to the actual paper itself. I'm just going to zoom in slightly. So we just want to trace around the outline of the paper as accurately as we can. Now I'm going to press P for the pen tool and I'm going to use the pen tool for this, but you could just, you could use any selection mode you like. You could use the um, polygonal lasso tool, for example, but it needs to be something quite accurate. So I'm just going to make sure we're on path mode up here and not shape. I'm just going to click and this one's nice and easy because it's all straight edges. Click in the top corner, scroll down, click, click. If you need to move the point you've just made, hold your control key or command if you're on a Mac and you can just hold and drag the points like that. And then we'll click back on the original there. You see the icons change with a little circle on the next to the pen. Click that to terminate the point and join them together. Okay. So that's now that's now in our path as a work path. Here's a little hint: just change the name to anything you like. Um, if you don't change the name of a path and it just stays as work path, you are in danger of losing it because it's only temporary. As soon as you give it a name, it keeps the path in there. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hold Control or Command and click on it, and it'll turn that into a selection. And what I'm going to do now is. I'm just going to create a folder by pressing the blank folder icon down there. And while the selection is still live, I'm going to click on the layer mask icon. So now we've got a mask around the paper itself. And the reason why I've done it in a folder here is so we can put multiple things in if we like, and they'll all be constrained by that mask. So what I need to do now is I need to go into my other monitor where I've got my... Um, where I've got my other files, and I'm going to just open this um, PSD for a menu. This is just something I've got offline. I'll put a link to it in the description so you can download it yourself. Um, but for now, I'm going to just merge this by highlighting both the layers and pressing Control or Command E. And um, because I'm just going to take the flat, the flat file, I'm just going to copy. I'm just going to paste that in and then drag it into our folder. OK. So it's the wrong size and, and everything at the moment, but you can see it's constrained to the shape of the paper. And we've done a pretty good job masking that. You want to make sure that you haven't gone over into the shadow there so it keeps that tiny little shadow. So now what we can do is we can just resize this accordingly. And if it's not quite straight, like it's not quite straight on the screen, the original piece of paper, so we can right click on the transform box and we can go distort and we can maybe just pull in that edge to sort of, so the line of our transform box there sort of follows the edge angle of the paper roughly, if you see what I mean. But this is just a quick example. So I'm going to press enter because I'm happy with that. So let's scroll back up so we can see our lovely plants. And now because the original underneath is blank and it's got these natural sort of shadows running across and things like that. I'm going to put this on multiply blending mode, which is going to do two things. One, it'll incorporate the shading and the shadows nicely and naturally, but it will also make it go a little bit too dark. I think let's have a look. Yeah. So it just made it go a little bit gray because the original image wasn't that bright and um, underneath. So it's, it's sort of kept all those shading and shadows nicely. 
which is fantastic. But what I want to do now is just to add a little bit more brightness back to this paper. So I'm just going to add a levels adjustment layer. And I'm going to go to the white point here at the right hand side of this histogram display. And I'm just going to drag it left, pinch it in a bit, and that's going to just brighten the lightest points. I don't want to go too far because I do want it to keep some of that natural shading from the layer below. Something like that's good. And again, because we've put it in this group, this folder here, it's only affecting the paper beneath it. 